Hello and welcome to Wickham Museum's virtual talk on Wickham Wanderers, why are they called the Chair Boys? My name's Catherine and I'm the curator at Wickham Museum. And this talk is based on one that I put together a few years ago when Wickham Wanderers Football Club approached the museum and said to us that they were constantly overhearing conversations um, during games, um, children saying, Daddy, Daddy, why are they called the chair boys? And they, um, they approached Wickham Museum to help them explain that. And um, we worked then on a couple of different events with the football club. So we did an event at Adams Park in 2010 that focused on that very question, why are they called the chair boys? And then that led to us doing a joint exhibition um, a couple of years later in 2013 to celebrate 125 years of the history of Wickham Wanderers. So, um, yeah, I've got a couple of pictures here of the exhibition. So we had lots of Wickham Wanderers artifacts from the museum's collection from Wickham Wanderers Football Club. We had loans from supporters, including the famous Comanche that you can see in the image on the left. Um, we had loads of interactives in the exhibition. So you can see table football there. We had spot the ball, um, not in the images, but we had an interactive goal that um, did a commentary, depending on where in the goal you scored. So it was a really fun exhibition. It was a great one to work on. Um, so, um, this then is a talk based on the talk that I put together quite a few years ago now, why are they called the chair boys? So before I answer the question, why are they called the chair boys? I want to have a quick look at um, three other questions. So um, I want to look at firstly, why are they called Wickham Wanderers? Secondly, why are they also called the blues? And finally, why is there a swan with a chain around its neck on the club's badge? And then I'll go on to talk about why they're called the chair boys. So why are they called Wickham Wanderers? So I've got a scarf with Wickham Wanderers on from um, 1993. So it's the year that Wickham Wanderers um, were in the FA Trophy final at Wembley. So, um, but the name Wickham Wanderers goes right back to 1887, um, which is when we date the origins of the club from. So the club were looking for a name and at the time, the most well-known and successful football club was called the Wanderers Football Club. And they had won the first ever FA Cup in 1872. And then over the next seven seasons, they won it a total of five times. And the original Wanderers got their name because they didn't have permanent home ground. Instead, they wandered across London to various different grounds. Now, Wickham Wanderers had actually started out under a different name of North Town Wanderers in 1884, named after the famous Wanderers team. However, by 1887, they realised that actually not many of their players were from the north of High Wickham anymore, and um, they wanted to come up with a different name. And so there were several Wickham, High Wickham teams back then. And so they changed their name to Wickham Wanderers. And Wickham Wanderers' first ever game was against another local team who went by the name of Wickham Nose. And very sadly, Wickham Wanderers didn't win their first match. But even more unfortunately, it's not recorded how Wickham Nose got their name. So Wickham Wanderers are also known as the Blues why are they known as the Blues? So this is the earliest photograph in Wickham Museum um, of Wickham Wanderers back from 1899. Obviously it's black and white but the team were wearing their light and dark blue quarters which the team had worn right from the very beginning. They were known as the Oxford and Cambridge colours although there was absolutely no university connection with Wickham Wanderers, they were all working men, not university men, not university educated. 
eventually it led fairly obviously to the Wanderers other nickname the Blues but that nickname is much more recent compared to the nickname of the Chair Boys so um, yeah um, 50 years later on from this photograph before they were ever known as the Blues the Chair Boys nickname is much older and I just wanted to show you another couple of photographs whilst we're talking about the shirts and the quarters. So the quarters were what they wore right from the very beginning, but they haven't worn them all the way through their history. As you can see from the photo from 1921 and this one from 1986, they were still in the light and dark blue, but not the quarters. So the quarters are a relatively recent reintroduction. Um, so and here's a more recent shirt from 2007 it's the year of the league cup semi-final against chelsea and yeah the blues nickname started in around about 1950. so um as you see from this flag so most of these artifacts that i'm showing you off from the collections at Wickham Museum. This flag is, uh, it's from 2001, which is the year of the FA Cup semi-final against Liverpool. So why is there a swan on the Wickham Wanderers flag? So um, High Wickham and the County of Buckinghamshire, which High Wickham's in, uses a chain swan on its coat of arms. So usually the Buckinghamshire swan has open wings and the Wickham one has closed wings but both versions come from the coat of arms of the Dukes and Earls of Buckingham. And um, the, <clears throat> the chain is on the swan and the crown because traditionally swans belong to the king or the queen. So both um, the county of Buckinghamshire and the town of High Wycombe have taken on um, the swan of the Dukes and Earls of Buckingham that they used on their coat of arms and incorporated it into the town crest and the county crest. And then the football team, uh, Wickham Wanderers football team, use the town's crest on their flag. So why are they called the chair boys? So I've got a flag here from, um, from 2019, 2020 season. I couldn't find the nickname of the chair boys on any of the earlier flags, scarves, anything like that. Nothing that was in the museum's collection. So I've um, borrowed this from a website to show you. Um, so back in the 1970s and 80s and for well over 100 years before that, if High Wycombe was mentioned, most people immediately thought of chairs. And it's probably true to say that every family had at least one member in working in the furniture industry, if not more. High Wycombe was effectively a single industry town and that was, um, well, originally chair making, it then broadened out into other types of furniture. Now, however, there's relatively very few people making furniture in High Wycombe. Many of the large factories have either closed or moved elsewhere. Furniture is still made in the town, but it's no longer true to say that High Wycombe is a one industry town. More and more people move into the area and because furniture making is, is so much less obvious, so much less predominant, fewer and fewer people are aware of that aspect of the town's history. But, as I say, it, it was absolutely massive um, for about 150 years of the town's history. So here's a, a fairly well-known photograph from 1877. So it's 10 years before Wickham Wanderers were set up, um, but it's the year that Queen Victoria visited High Wycombe, by which time so the town already had a very well-established furniture industry. And they put up this chair arch to welcome Queen Victoria to the town and her carriage passed underneath this arch and on the way back to the train station she actually asked the carriage to stop so she could have a closer look at the chairs so for once Queen Victoria was amused she was amused by our chair arch and the town as I say were incredibly proud of this industry and wanted to put up this arch to to show it off really to Queen Victoria 
So why had High Wycombe become a furniture town? So a few reasons. So we had lots and lots of the raw materials. So there was lots of woodland growing round about the town, specifically beech woods. So much of the timber that was used in the local furniture industry was, was beech wood and that grew in huge amounts around the town, around the villages that surrounded the town, I should say. So we had the raw materials, then once the chairs were made, we had really good transport links into London and also into Oxford. So High Wycombe is um, equal distance between between London and Oxford and from Oxford you could then transport the furniture into the Midlands and further north and High Wycombe really their furniture made here went um, throughout England and also was transported internationally as well and during Victorian times. Um, we also, just as the furniture industry was taking off, as more people could afford to begin to buy more furniture and chairs for their cottages and for their um, farmhouses, because High Wycombe furniture was, was always fairly affordable furniture. Um, it wasn't made for the big houses, it was made for cottages and farmhouses. And just as people were beginning to be able to afford to buy things like that at the beginning of Queen Victoria's reign from about the 1840s. What you find in High Wycombe is that there were lots and lots of men looking for jobs. There was fairly high unemployment because the mills, so the paper mills had been the biggest employer and they were becoming mechanized. Um, having machinery meant that they needed to employ fewer people. So you have, um, people you have men looking for jobs and um it all just really took off at the right time so these these men found employment in the furniture industry also at the same time up until then local beach had been used quite extensively as firewood um beach burns quite well relatively smokeless it was in big demand in in london houses for burning but then coal began to be much more popular. So locally, they were looking for other uses for the beech wood, so um, furniture. So the furniture industry took off in a really big way. So um, just a couple of examples of high Wycombe chairs that were made during Victorian times. So on the left there, we've got a very typical chair from the area known as a Windsor chair and on the right a cane seated chair so they're all it's fairly affordable um, it's not fancy or posh furniture it's wooden furniture and the high wickham factories and workshops between them were capable of turning out huge vast quantities of chairs so in 1877 there were around about 100 different um, small to medium sized factories and between them they were making nearly 5,000 chairs every single day. Um, so you have the legs were made by turners who were nick nicknamed bodgers. They made them out in the beech woods and here's a photograph here of a bodger, a turner, taken in about 1910 in one of the villages nearby to High Wycombe in Lacey Green. Um, they would set up these huts out in the woods and these uh, their pole lathes and turn the legs there. Um, here we've got um, the Queen Elizabeth visiting High Wycombe in the 1960s and um, the curator of the museum at the time, John Mays, and the Queen is visiting uh, a reconstructed Bodger's Hut um, at the museum. Uh, so, um, oh yeah, 1962 it was. So um, we've got an actual Bodger, we've got the Queen visiting a Bodger's Hut with the museum curator. Uh, then we've got another famous Bodger. So, um, Tony Horseman 
is one of the most well-known and successful Wickham Wanderers football players and he was nicknamed Bodger. So he wasn't actually a Bodger, he wasn't a turner of chair legs, but he did work in the furniture industry as a sander for Healy's Furniture Factory, which was on the London Road. And he also played for Wickham Wanderers for 17 years between 1961 and 1978. And he described those as the best years of his life. And he's the club's all-time leading goal scorer. He played 749 times and scored 416 goals for Wickham Wanderers. And um, the mascot of Wickham Wanderers is also nicknamed Bodger. And here he is at an event at Wickham Museum in 2013, welcoming some children. So, um, yeah, so you had the chair legs being made by Bodgers out in the woodlands. Uh, and the chairs were assembled in the factories. As I say, there, there were, you know, at certain times, well over 100 different factories within the town. Um, this one is Woodbridges on Denmark Street in High Wycombe, taken in at about 1880. It's the entire workforce outside the factory with the owner in his bowler hat. Um, yeah, and there were so many of these factories. This was an absolutely typical one. Um, and as I say, it was a one industry town. So that was why so many of the early players of Wickham Wanderers were employed within the furniture industry. So um, back in the amateur days, whilst the players still needed to have a day job, a, um, quite a large number of them worked in the furniture industry. Um, that's how they earned their living and hence the nickname the chair boys. So um, got a photo of uh, the inside of a factory here. So it's Hutchinson and Edmonds on Victoria Street from 1925. So um, we've got, um, so Tommy Jackman, was a furniture maker and also played on the team and we, we don't have a photo of him sadly but we've got a photo of his brother Tim here um, at Hutchinson and Edmonds in May 1925 in the polishing shop. Um, other players that were also furniture makers included Sandy Holt who was a player in the 1920s who worked for Goms. Goms went on to um, make G-plan furniture from the 1950s. Um, also from the 1920s we had William Avery who worked for William Birch's furniture factory which was one of the much bigger factories like Goms. Uh, we had William McDermott, who was nicknamed Mac, and he was a chair upholsterer and also a player for Wickham Wanderers. He played alongside Frank Adams. So the team were nicknamed the Chair Boys from the very early days. Um, however, by about the 1950s, the name the Blues became much more common and the nickname the Chair Boys just began to be a little bit forgotten. However, in 1986, the name Chair Boys was revived by a fancy, the Chair Boys Gas. So um, they began to use the nickname the Chair Boys again. However, at the time, not many supporters realised that it was a historic name, but that nickname has stuck ever since. And that is why they're called the Chair Boys. So why, let's just recap why they called the Chair Boys. So chair making was the day job for many early players back in the amateur days. Wickham Wanderers now are known as both the Chair Boys and the Blues. Chair Boys is their original nickname. The Blues is much more recent, since about 1950. Chair Boys as a nickname was revived in 1986. And Tony Horseman, their most successful player, was a furniture maker and he was nicknamed Bodger. Okay, so thank you very much for listening. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this talk on Wickham Wanderers, why they're called the Chair Boys. Thank you.